Making the case for following a living spiritual teacher today on this Sant Mat Satsang podcast, a production of Spiritual Awakening Radio. My name is James Bean. My website was recently renovated and has many buttons that will take you to the e-library, various podcast sites, YouTube, the writer's site Medium, and other social media where you'll find announcements about podcasts, daily spiritual quotes, and other messages. There is a Sant Mott tab at the website, which takes you to a web page providing a rather thorough introduction to the path of the masters that all can be found at spiritualawakeningradio.com. Making the case for following a living spiritual teacher. His disciples said to him, Twenty-four prophets have spoken in Israel, and they all spoke of you. He said to them, You've ignored the living one right in front of you, and you've talked about those who are dead. That's a very fine translation of the Gospel of Thomas saying 52. The world of religion is like that. There are people that follow those who have passed on. You know, we're a spiritual teacher who wrote some books back in the 1920s. Or might follow ancient scripture or just the promptings of their own ego based on their heredity and environmental influences. But very few follow a living spiritual teacher in the here and now. Making the case for following a living spiritual teacher, a Sant Sat Guru. Spiritual seeking has the not so modest goal of revealing nothing less than the divine, the truth or ultimate reality of God. For far less modest goals than this, we would not dare attempt their achievement without a qualified teacher. Our universities and the degrees they confer bear witness to this fact. For example, we would never attempt to acquire the skills of a professional airline pilot with mere reading, nor would we dare take instructions from someone who himself has never flown. Common sense reveals and requires that we approach subjects such as aviation or any number of other technical subjects with the help of skillful teachers and tried and true curricula. Why then would we assume that the highest and arguably the most difficult of all goals could be achieved without a teacher or guide? That was an excerpt from an article by Don Howard about his own spiritual search for a living master, a living Sant Sat Guru, his own seeking and finding and various lessons he learned along the way. I can send you a copy of that article if you like. Just request it via email, james at spiritualawakeningradio.com. A note about has never flown, theory versus experience. A note about the blind leading the blind. If a guru does not see inner light, himself or herself, if a guru does not see the light or hear the sound and they don't uh, experience, they don't have experiences of the inner regions, the various levels or heavens, Odds are his or her students probably won't either, even if they do teach the theory of these things. It's fascinating. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in their midst. There is a spirituality that is taught, but there is also a spirituality that is caught. There is a spiritual charge subtle influences going on, and if the teacher is the embodiment of what is taught, if they are a conduit of the divine, 
a co-worker in the divine plan, are the embodiment of what they are teaching, then on subtle levels they influence their students. Beyond learning, there is a subtle influence going on that helps the followers of that teacher more easily see and hear within successfully practicing meditation and going within. It's fascinating to see that. It's not a matter of just the theory. There are examples in the history of the Western world of people copying excerpts from books like Path of the Masters and plagiarizing it, incorporating it into their own works and publishing it, or printing up some business cards and putting up a website. But it's not the same. And it doesn't lead to the same results. It's not a matter of teachings only. A true master is the embodiment of what is taught. It's really the God within the guru that makes the guru the guru. It's the God within the master that makes the master a master. It's not a matter of self-proclamation. It's not a matter of inheriting the title of master or being voted in as a master, like a city council voting in someone to fill a position like mayor. One has to be the embodiment of the teachings. And typically, a spiritual master, if you look at their own background, they were mentored by a teacher themselves and were duly appointed by them to serve in the role of a Sant Sat Guru, a living master for a spiritual community, part of a lineage of teachers that goes back many generations. Like, uh, for instance, before the 16th Dalai Lama, there was the 15th and the 14th before him and so on. Part of a lineage, that's the Eastern approach. A lineage of teachers and accreditation process. Rumi says, if you seek to know God, sit at the feet of the saints. The following is from a sutra of Jainism. Hail to the best in the world, the guides of the world, the benefactors of the world, the light givers of the world, the enlighteners of the world. And something very similar to the Gospel of Thomas quote I shared earlier. This is from Sant Tukaram of Maharashtra. Without a master, all scriptures are like the whispering of ghosts. This is from the book Love's Last Madness, a note from Love's Last Madness. Neither inherited beliefs nor those taken on hearsay can advance a seeker on the path of divine revelation. Guru Nanak says that the true master, the Satguru, unites us with God, gives us a Godward sort of focus. The preceptor is worthy who unites the seeker with God. This is from Mahant Das, who was affiliated, I believe, with the Sant Dharam Das lineage of masters, the Kabir lineage. The name of the Lord is to be obtained through initiation from a qualified master. Initiation, which is one of the core processes of all esoteric paths, is the medium through which the individual soul, Jiva Atma, learns to transcend the fetters of space, time, and causation, and gets transformed into the spiritual world of Param Atman. The guru who initiates is the one who is himself firmly established in the spiritual experience. Unquote. This is from the Adi Granth, the Sikh scriptures, volume 3, Sri Guru Granth Sahib, volume 3. The Sat Guru given Gnosis or direct experience is lit up in the heart 
with whose light is dispelled the darkness of spiritual ignorance. Unquote. Back to one of those Gnostic Gospels. This is from a text known as Dialogue of the Savior, one of the Nag Hammadi texts. When I arrived, I opened a path and taught people about the way of passage for those who are chosen and solitary, who have known the Father and have pursued truth. That's an interesting quote, which describes the role of a living teacher. I opened a path and taught people about the way of passage for those who are chosen and solitary, who have known the Father and have pursued truth. It, to some extent or degree, reminds me of saying 17 of the Gospel of Thomas, I will give you what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard. That's the role of a living teacher, to provide initiation into the mysteries of the kingdom of the heavens. And so, in that sense, Saint-Mot has some similarities to other cousin schools of mysticism that at various times in history have operated. Saint-Mot doesn't really click so well with New Age movement or Western esoterica, but more in line with, uh, or more, has more affinities with Kabbalah, Gnosticism, Sufism, Platonism, and of course Pythagoreanism in ancient times, Hermetica, who had living teachers, not just simply esoteric writings, but had living teachers, Valentinus of Alexandria, or some teacher. Gnosticism is not just about texts, but those who wrote the texts, and, you know, to find people like that in the world today, living Gnosis now, someone like that. A living Valentinus, a living Meister Eckhart, a living Rumi or Shams of Tabriz, not just writings from generations back. Dust from Nag Hammadi, Egypt on an archaeological dig. Swami Sant Sevi Ji Maharaj said, This mysterious path is described in the holy books, but it cannot be found simply by the study of sacred texts. It is found by the grace and guidance of an accomplished teacher. His disciples said to him, 24 prophets have spoken in Israel, and they all spoke of you. He said to them, you've ignored the living one right in front of you. And you've talked about those who are dead. The saying of Jesus from the Gospel of Thomas saying, 52, once again. And that's kind of how it is in the world of religion and spiritual paths today. You know, there's a focus on the past, but there's no living teacher that is sought out, someone here now in the world today, a living path, writing their own scriptures, adding their own chapter to the book of life in the present generation. Books falling from the sky did not create, create the world religions. Books falling from the sky did not create the world religions. Before there was the book, there was the author of the book. Without the living teachers, there would be no Torah, no noble truths, no eightfold path, no sermon on the mount, no sermon on the light, no golden rule, no gospel of Thomas, no surahs of the Quran, no ahimsa message of Lord Mahavira in Jainism, no sages to compose Upanishads, no Krishna and Bhagavad Gita, no Japji of Guru Nanak, no Daudi Jing of Lao Tzu. No golden verses of Pythagoras. If there was no master Shams of Tabriz, there would have been no disciple by the name of Rumi. If there was no Swamiji Maharaj, no Tukaram, no Tulsi Sahib, no Dadu, no Ravi Das, no Mirabai, no Maharishi Mehi, no Sawan Singh, no Guru Kabir, no Darya Sahib, 
No living masters, there would be no Sant Mat, no students, no initiates, no satsangs to attend, no school of spirituality, no clear and organized system of inner light and sound meditation called Surat Shabad Yoga to be initiated into, nobody to give the initiation, no one to expand anyone's horizons and awareness. The essential reason for having a spiritual teacher is not to worship the personality of the teacher, but to learn from them the methods of spiritual practice. The living teacher preserves the methods of meditation and passes that knowledge and experience on to the next generation. A good spiritual master also motivates his or her students to practice meditation and lead an ethical life in the context of a spiritual community or group of people, Sangit, Satsang, Sangha, books alone isolated from a community of others would not be enough to sustain spiritual practice or cultivate inner mystical experiences. Satsang inspires, teaches, motivates, and group meditation helps to accelerate one's own inner experience. So there are written books by living masters. Masters do have much respect for past masters and scriptures and quote them freely in their literature. And there are also spiritual retreats, satsangs, group meditations, live streaming or recent recordings, communications going on between master and disciple and amongst those who are part of the Sangit, the spiritual community of that master. Always with the theme of reminding people to do Simran and to meditate. Flee if the focus of the path is not God Bhakti. The false guru gives sweet words, seeking popularity, but the Sat guru bestows wisdom seeking disciples, devotees of the Supreme Being. If you love somebody dearly, guide him again and again to tread the path of truth. That's a quote from the book, Treasure of Spiritual Peace. This is from Sant Dadu Dayal of Rajasthan. The whole world makes an outer display, whereas the practice of the saint is within. This is the difference between the two. Hence, no accord is found between them. There is great difference between a saint and a mimic. The two are as far apart as earth and sky. The saint is absorbed in God, whereas the mimic pins his hopes on the world. Unquote. Sant Dadu Dayal, I was going to say, pins his hopes on public relations and image making, something like that. But it just says... The mimic pins his hopes on the world. And, of course, in the world are all too many examples of corrupt leaders with a never-ending focus of consolidating their own power and influence. There is a section of the Anurag Sagar, Kabir's Ocean of Love, dedicated to this. It's a section called the Yam Dutes, the Messengers of Death, In the name of Kabir, he will establish his path in the world. The souls who go to him, being controlled by illusion, will fall into the mouth of Kal, unquote. That's a similar passage to like like what you'll find in the New Testament. Many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and and yet deceive people. And uh, Kabir said something very similar, you know, about people coming in his name, and yet deceiving people, having, you know, an ashram filled with weapons and strange stuff going on, weird headlines. And this plays out, again, generation after generation. Some people see the Yam Dutz section of the Anurag Sagar as referring to certain people in the past, but, you know, it, uh, like the Book of Revelation, it just plays out again and again in each generation. You know, the tea leaves of interpreting prophecy 
tend to assemble again and again into some shape or form. And so in each generation, we find this playing out. There are always the yam dutes in our midst. Ponths of death, dusty cups that quench not thirst, no more light, no more sound. That phrase, into the mouth of Kal. It's interesting no to notice that this phrase, fall into the mouth of Kal, the false god of time, death, and illusion, was used by, was also used by Sant Darya Sahib of Bihar. Listen mindfully, O Fakir Das. I explain this to you, says Darya. As long as the discipline of the sound current is preserved unadulterated, the line of succession will truly continue. But when it is mixed with outer rituals and display of external garbs, my sound current will part company, my divine essence will depart, and the souls will go into the mouth of Kal. I shall then come to this world and shall proclaim the teaching of the sound current again. Proclaiming the teaching, I shall found the line of succession, and emancipating the souls, I shall take them to my abode. For eons I have been coming and imparting the teaching of the true sound current, says Sant Darya Sahib of Bihar. That is one of the most fascinating hymns that's from, from an anthology of the writings of Sant Darya Sahib of Bihar. Sant Darya Sahib of Bihar, as I've mentioned on past podcasts, going back a while, a certain number of podcasts dedicated to the history of Sant Mat, the origins of Sant Mat, Darya Sahib of Bihar, as well as Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras, both were gurus that rose up out of the Dharamdas lineage of gurus, protesting rites and rituals, growing rites and rituals and statues, and, and Hinduization, I guess, would be the term some would use. And that the teaching of the sound current was falling by the wayside. They were totally just roasting that as departure from the true path of Guru Kabir. And you see what happens over time over the centuries, you know, in order to get to the initiation of the sound, people have to be experiencing inner light. The old time, old timey method of initiation in Santmat is to initiate people into sacred names and light. And then when they see light, they move on to the initiation of the sound. Well, if in a group people generally aren't seeing light, then they don't go proceeding to the second initiation into the sound. And soon enough, there won't be any light, no sound, and it's all looking back in time and adopting a, a path of scriptures, past masters, statues, beads, rites and rituals, and so on. That's easy to do. That's easy to impart. Mysticism is a, is a fragile thing. That is more difficult to preserve and communicate from generation to generation. Dogma, creeds, buildings, samads, statues, that's very easy to communicate from one generation to the next. Subtle inner explorations of inner space, that's more fragile. That's more difficult. That can't be materially or physically preserved in the document. That's something between living teachers and living students, souls, making their ascension back to the divine. That's a spiritual thing. And so Darya Sahib of Bihar here is saying that, you know, when the sound current vanishes from a spiritual movement, 
when it goes south, when it goes kaput, when it's pretty much a memorial society to past saints that once taught great things, but what have you done for us lately? You know, if it's a dusty, cobwebby situation of looking back in time and there's no more living master, uh, then Sant Darya Sahib, in the spirit of Kabir, and some say, some believe that Sant Darya Sahib was the reincarnation of Guru Kabir. He said he would be coming back if if the the last master dies off and uh, there's no more Sant Song, no more Sant Mat, no more inner light and sound meditation being properly taught. He's coming back during this Kali Yuga age and rebooting the path again. And indeed, if you read the Anurag Sagar, the Dharam Das text, the Ocean of Love is the English translation of the, the term Anurag Sagar. If you read that, Kabir in there is in the role of establishing the lineage of spiritual masters or sant sat gurus in the world in the various yugas of time including in kali yuga and so here darya sahib in the spirit of kabir or in, in a very kabir like manner is saying that you know if this path dies off i'm coming back <laughs> and re-establishing the lineage of masters once again, it's very amazing. It's, I think, one of the most interesting hymns in Sant Mat and, of course, by Sant Darya Sahib of Bihar. The role of the genuine master is to bring us into our own experience of God. It's not about being a socialite as part of a group, a sect, a religion, an organization. The role of the genuine master is to bring us into our own experience of God. Guru Gobind Singh once said, All the world is entangled in meaningless rituals and knows not the inner workings of God. When approaching a spiritual path, one should seek out authoritative original sources of information directly from that path and not mentally filter a path in light of other outside belief systems that one may be familiar with, perhaps grew up with, attempting to understand a path using the distorted lens of New Age movement, esoterica, occult, Western esoterica, some fundamentalist ideology, materialism, or other far-removed, far-distant philosophies. The reality is the classic definition of the genuine guru from a traditional Indian perspective is light giver. The Sant Sat Guru guides souls into a direct and personal experience of God here and now by teaching students to adopt the necessary methods of meditation practice, ethical values, and by cultivating a receptive attitude of God Bhakti, love and devotion. Sant Mat is as much about love and devotion as it is about discipline to perform meditation practice. Those two go together, love and meditation. In Sant Mat mysticism, the Hansa is a term for soul that has been baptized in the lake of nectar and finds its original nature restored. The karma is washed off in the lake of nectar. And underneath the dirt and grime of the eons is the luminosity of the soul. The Hansa soul, the heavenly bird, the bird of heaven, is baptized in the lake of nectar and finds its original nature restored. Then it continues its upward ascent, eventually reaching the fifth plane, or Satlok. The Sants, soul, souls that have reached the fifth plane or above, and are in union with God, have composed and continue to compose descriptions of the inner regions, usually in the form of hymns, banis, bhajans, mystic poetry, including about Hansas in Satlok or Sachkan, the true eternal realm of timeless, pure spirit. 
We are all Hanses or Hanses to be as we journey back to the beloved, the ocean of love and oneness. The definition of a Sansat Guru is someone that's reached the fifth plane or above and is in union with the Supreme Being and of course also has to be a fairly egoless conduit for the Supreme Being in the world. A co-worker, conscious co-worker of the Divine Plan. I was reading in the, the Mandayan scriptures, Gnostic scriptures, and it was a fascinating hymn about the Supreme Being assuming human form in order to communicate with souls here. That's a great definition also of the Sant Sat Guru. How does a formless God from another dimension communicate with souls that pretty much are attached to the world of the five senses and that's the world they operate in? They have no sixth sense or open third eye. Intuition not so good, hit or miss. How do you communicate? How do you reach out? You assume a human form and introduce yourself. A sant is a Hansa soul who, by his or her own spiritual master, was mentored and appointed to become the leader of a spiritual community. They are a sant and satguru as a result of their own inward spiritual state of realization and oneness with God after countless hours of meditation. It's not based, as I mentioned earlier, on an outward title, robe or turban, or image making and public relations management. The inward reality is what counts. The inward reality is what counts. The Sants of India have produced some of the most eloquent, ecstatic, God-devoted poetry, prayers, and hymns the world has ever known. Coming up next, some selections from the Adi Granth, the Sikh scriptures, as well as mystic poetry of Guru Kabir. The role of the living Satguru, according to the Adi Granth. The role of the living teacher, not a book. According to the Adi Granth, the role of the master is not being a book. According to the book, the role of the living Satguru is to mentor souls. By the Guru's instruction, the mind of the disciple is rendered immaculate, and she keeps God clasped to her heart. She keeps God enshrined in her mind, arranges her affairs, and by the Master's instruction knows her Lord. My beloved has fascinated my soul, and I have obtained the Lord, the scribe of destiny. Serving the Sat Guru, she attains eternal peace and God. The enemy of ego and pride abides in her mind. By the Master's instruction, the name of God is contemplated. By the Guru's grace, soul and body are saturated with the Lord, and the Lord's name seems sweet to the mortal. The Lord's name seems sweet to them. He liberates all their families. With their mouths they utter the Lord's name. Their comings and goings cease. They obtain bliss and their attention remains absorbed in the celestial music. From volume 5, that was from volume 5 of the Sri Guru Granth, the Adi Granth, or Sikh scriptures. The attention remains absorbed in the celestial music. That's what we mean by Shabad or Nam, the Nada, Nada Yoga, Shabda Yoga, inner sound meditation. Music of the spheres, Nam, Word, Logos, Tao, in the beginning was the sound, in the beginning was the Logos, in the beginning was the Om, in the beginning was the Word, in the beginning was the Who, 
and the beginning was the song of creation. Kabir's Ocean of God Bhakti. Here the translator has preserved the numerous names for God that Kabir used in his mystic verses. Guru Kabir, the remote, the inaccessible, makes a fort for his dwelling, which illumines with his light. Lightning flashes, there is bliss where the child of Gobind plays, my soul loves Ram's name, old age, death, doubt, flee. They who care about castes are forever singing praises about themselves, but sweet melodies play unstruck where the Lord Gopal dwells. The remote unknowable one who established the earth, the spheres, the three worlds, and the three virtues lives in every heart. He reveals himself in the blossom's fragrance. He dwells in the nectar of a mud flower, the lotus. His mantra is in the twelve-petaled heart. His light is visible above and below. He illumines the infinite sphere of silence. Neither sun nor moon are found there. The primal Narinjan, or Lord, enjoys himself. He knows the universe and each heart. He bathes in the lake of nectar. His mantra is, I am he, or I am that. He is not concerned with good deeds or bad. He has no caste, nor is he casteless. He knows neither pain nor solace. He is in the Guru's house. He cannot be avoided. He knows not birth or death. He is infinite silence. Those who search for him in their hearts and speak his words will become him. They who place his mantra of light in their hearts. Kabir says, those mortals will certainly swim across. Guru Kabir. Swim across the ocean of samsara is what he is referring to there. The ocean of the world. This world of changes. That's a reading from the book Songs of Kabir from the Adi Granth by Nirmal Das published by Sunni Press, New York. Representing all of the words of Guru Kabir preserved in the Adi Granth. Seek scriptures. This is also from Guru Kabir from Songs of Kabir, culled by Rabindranath Tagore, who himself was a famous mystic poet. This really embodies today's podcast, making the case for following a living spiritual teacher. Says Kabir, It is the mercy of my true guru, the Sat Guru, that has made me to know the unknown, I have learned from him how to walk without feet, to see without eyes, to hear without ears, to drink without mouth, to fly without wings. I have brought my love and my meditation into the land where there is no sun and moon, nor day and night. Without eating I have tasted of the sweetness of nectar, and without water I have quenched my thirst. Where there is the response of delight, there is the fullness of joy. Before whom can that joy be uttered or described? Kabir says the Guru is great beyond words, and great is the good fortune of the disciple. The competent living teacher, Sant Sat Guru, saints and sages have 
unveiled all the mysteries of the spiritual journey and of self-realization in their discourses. All their techniques have been documented in the books, but without an accomplished teacher, we will not be able to understand the correct technique of true knowledge just by reading. That's a passage from Swami Sant Seviji Maharaj. And you see that every day, you know, people are into past saints like Meister Eckhart, Teresa of Avila, or the Nag Hammadi Library of the Gnostic texts. And on the outside looking in, they speculate, how did these people ascend to the third heaven, or the fourth heaven, or the fifth heaven? How is it that the radiant form of their master appeared to them? You know, how did they, what was their spiritual technique? You know, what, were, what was their spiritual practice? What was their sacred name? We may speculate about such things, but we do not have access to that. And even if we did, that alone would not be enough, for we too need to have a living teacher like they once did and to be taught, but also as spirituality needs to be communicated, that's caught, that helps to bring people into the experience of the mysteries of the kingdom of the heavens, the inner light and sound. So we may speculate about what was in those texts and how they achieved ascension through the heavens, but really we're going to have to duplicate what they did, not simply read about what they did in their writings. Like, for instance, um, another example would be, you know, we could look at a menu, read a book about this great feast that happened in the Rhineland of Germany several centuries ago, or we could seek out our own sustenance here and now. That's the only thing that's going to satiate our hunger, quench our thirst, not reading menus from the Middle Ages or archaeological digs from Egypt. The message of the Masters fills the world with hope, and at the same time it offers a rational foundation for such hope. It not only tells people what they should do, but it offers them a definite method of doing it. In the march of the ages, cycle after cycle, in every planet where human beings reside, the great masters are the light bearers of that world. Until the end of the ages, they will remain the friends and saviors of those who struggle toward the light. That's from Julian P. Johnson, his book, Path of the Masters. The following is from a satsang discourse of Baba Ram Singh, commenting on some verses of the Sarbachan Radhaswami poetry of Swamiji Maharaj, the great saint of Agra. Swamiji Maharaj says, even if you get a true living master and he gives you the initiation, if we are not doing our meditation and we are not following the practice and the path, then that nam again does not do anything. So if we are not doing our meditation and we are not following the path and the teachings of the masters, then neither the nam can do anything nor the guru can do anything for us. So we should consider ourselves indeed fortunate if we have the pangs of separation of God Almighty and of our Master within, and we follow that path and we do our meditation with love and affection. That way, if we do our meditation daily with love and affection, our mind will also become pure. The burden of karmas also is lessened, and the mind, which is scattered all over the place, also gets focused within, and the attention gets focused within. And if we do not do our meditation, then the mind, which is impure, continues to remain impure and keeps building up the karmas. 
Swamiji Maharaj says, now that he has explained what Nam means, what are the types of Nams and what is the credibility and what is the strength of the master who gives this Nam to us, he goes on to say that finally it is the will of the master. All of this is contained in the will of the master. It is in the will of the master to shower his grace on people who have come with impressions from the past. And he can convert them into gurumukhs, disciples. So if we sit for our meditation every day, then our mind will also become pure and we will get the grace of the master also. That's from a recent satsang discourse by Baba Ram Singh from a talk titled The Nam That Is Given By The Masters Until Their Charging Is There In That Nam It Is Not Really An Initiation An Interesting Name For A Satsang Discourse Translated Into English A Couple Years Back Guru Kabir once said, the only people who find this wisdom or truth are those who delve deep into the waters of knowledge, the waters of gnosis. Those who are afraid of drowning in the water of knowledge only sit by its banks and simply talk about the waters of knowledge. Wrapping up today's Sant Mat Satsang podcast, a production of Spiritual Awakening Radio, making the case for following a living spiritual teacher, a Sant Sat Guru, a living master. This is an ode to the Sant Sat Guru, a Guru Purnima ode to the living one, the Sant Sat Guru. Before I commence reading that, I'll give you my website and email address once again. James at spiritualawakeningradio.com is my email address. If you have any questions or looking for any particular books, any information you're seeking, also the website once again is spiritualawakeningradio.com. Wrapping up today's podcast, an ode to the Sant Sat Guru. In praise of the Sant Soul of Love, who has reached the spiritual realm above and merged in God. Hail to the competent living master, the qualified teacher, rare to find in this world, so few and far between. The true one, a genuine mentor of souls, righteous and worthy guide, a fearless being, light giver, leader of a spiritual community, with gratitude to the competent living one in a sea of samsara, illusion and world of changes, of falsehood and posing. There is a bright light in the darkness. A silent music becomes audible at the feet of such a loving, radiant one. The soul cannot help but find inner light and slip into deep samadhi meditation. In the eyes of a saint are love, wisdom, light, compassion, grace, a reflection of God in this realm of the material plane. The master power connects the soul with the supreme Lord of love. <laughs> 